Before we get into the review, I just want to quickly talk about the hair that was used in this video. This hair is from Royal Me and it's a full lace wig. It's kind of like a dip dye effect and the hair is absolutely gorgeous. It has a really, really shiny, healthy look to it. It's very soft. It's very bouncy. And what I most especially like about this hair is the lace. Well, the wig is the lace. The lace is very, very thin, which is really important in having a really nice melt. And it also has this fake scalp effect which is really nice in helping it look very realistic um i absolutely love this so basically what it is it's like a piece of fabric inside the wig um that makes your scalp look a lot more realistic and a lot more 3d i think it's a really cool concept and as well as that the wig has three combs on the side and one in the middle well two on the side and one in the middle just to help it stay down which also mean it can be worn glueless as well as that it also has adjustable straps which is perfect now onto the video hey guys welcome back to my channel so today's video is going to be a little bit different I'm going to be talking about something quite controversial. Um, Dollhouse London. I don't know if you guys know or have heard of Dollhouse London, but they are a well known. They're a well known salon in London. Um, they're well known dare I say it for the bad reasons because there are a lot of negative reviews online and I've seen a few myself um, of girls talking about their experience at Dollhouse London and how they had a negative experience, how they treat influencers differently, how their customer service is quite poor, all sorts, literally like a lot of reviews, like review after review after review after review after review after review after review um, that are negative, yeah. And I'm not gonna lie, the way I found out about Dollhouse London was from seeing those negative videos or just from seeing the negative reviews online. And do you know what? Me being me, I was like, let me see how bad it is. Let me try and book an appointment and experience it for myself. I wanted to basically see if it was all talk or if the reviews were actually true. Now, I have done these worst rated videos obviously regarding makeup. I've never done a worst rated regarding hair. So I was a little bit nervous with this one. I didn't really know how it was going to pan out. I myself have had um, bad experiences with hairstylists in the UK. But that's another story for another day. So I can completely understand where you guys are coming from when you're talking about these hairstylists treating you badly. Because I don't think it's fair for us to pay our hard earned money and get treated like crap. I really don't think it's fair. Honestly, I feel like a lot of, um, I don't want to say Instagram make um, makeup artists. I don't want to say Instagram hairstylists, but I feel like a lot of hairstylists that are popular on Instagram are actually quite rude. And it's quite disappointing because... Like I said earlier, I've been in this position where I've looked at someone's Instagram or looked at like hair that I've seen on Instagram or just online in general that's been banging and I'm like, do you know what, yeah? I'm gonna book this hairstylist. I want her to slay me. I'm super excited, you know? And then I get emails and texts from her and the tone is very, ugh, like very privileged, very, it's just, it just comes across really like, like they don't really value their customers. Being that that's happened to me, I wanted to, I wanted to really see for myself just how bad Dollhouse London was. So, I don't want to tackle this in a way where I'm pretending to be someone else because that's very disingenuous and it just looks a bit funny. So I went on their Instagram page, had a little scroll, then I followed the link in their bio and, you know, went to book or whatever. So the booking process was pretty simple. It's just basically your name, what kind of hairstyle you wanted and... Um, other stuff. I put in my name. I just put in my normal name because I didn't want it to be a case of me pretending to be someone else and I get there. I just don't want it to be quite messy so I just put in my normal name. Then they give you options of different hairstyles but the wig I had is basically already pre-plucked, locked already bleached, hair is actually on the wig itself so no one needs to sew it. Everything is pretty much done so which means that I'm paying for stylish to literally just stick it on my head which was a little bit annoying. Basically there was no option for that service for like the, the stylist just stick it on my head. So I had to like pay the full fee of like having the stylist like pluck it and customize it, which wasn't really necessary. But so I picked that and then they asked you for like a picture of your nape and your edges. So I took a picture of my edges and my nape, uh, sent that to them and everything was pretty dandy after that. I paid a deposit, which was 40 pounds and picked a date which was quite free like there were actually quite a lot of free dates but i'm guessing that's because of the whole coronavirus thing can i just say guys i really risked my life for this one 
I really went out, like this was before the quarantine, but I really went out during the corona just to get some footage for y'all, okay? So please appreciate this shit, okay? Yeah, booked a date and then um, they sent me a little text saying, here's a little reminder, you booked a date with Dollhouse, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, so then from there, it was just li literally just a waiting game. So the day of the booking, Obviously, I took my wig. Whilst I was like, literally, like as soon as I left my house, I got, I saw a text from um, a Nigerian number, which was really quite weird. I saw a text from a Nigerian number that said something. Let me just find it and read it so I'm not getting the wrong info. So it says, hi Ropa, I'm messaging from Dollhouse. If you happen to be around, could you come in sooner? Kiss. And my response was, hi, sorry, I'm just seeing this. I don't live close, so I won't be able to come any sooner than my scheduled time of 1 p.m. So yeah, my time was 1 p.m. But I'm making my way now. The thing I didn't like about this is not to say that what she said was wrong, because I know obviously sometimes like with salons, there can be like cancellation. People can come in earlier or later and things like that. But I just feel like with a lot of like UK salons and UK hairstylists or just hairstylists in general, black hairstylists, some of them, I'm not saying all of them, some of them. Like I said earlier with the whole privilege thing, they do this thing where they're like, if you're five minutes late, it's a penalty with this much, five pound fine. If you're 10 minutes late, it's a 40 pound fine. Like, they're just very like stringent with their rules. And I feel like it's quite cheeky for them to ask me to either come earlier or later. I feel like if you set me a time, let me come on that time. Because if it was the other way around and I said, oh, I'm about, can I just come in earlier? You're most likely to say no. It's kind of cheeky sometimes when um, hairstylists or like salons in general ask you to come at a later time or a, a, an earlier time. I just feel like it's quite, I don't know. T I, tell me what you guys think in this. Do, am I making a good point? But I feel like it's a little bit unprofessional. Sorry, but yeah. So yeah, she sent me that and I told her I couldn't make it on that time. I was gonna come at my regular time. I got to King's Cross. The salon is near King's Cross station. I think it's like around King's Cross somewhere. So I got there literally like 10 minutes before one. My appointment was at one. Um, it was telling me it was a 10 minute walk from King's Cross and the Uber was telling me it was five. I can't remember. The Uber was telling me it was five minutes, something like that. But I was not in the mood that day. Honestly, I just didn't feel like walking. I was tired, the whole Corona thing. I was like, do you know what? Let me just get a cab. So I got the cab and I'm going to insert the clip right here of what happened when I got the cab. Okay. Hey guys. So I'm just in my Uber now, making my way to Dollhouse. Um, I'm a little bit late. So it's literally one o'clock and my appointment's at one o'clock, but there's traffic. So I'm going to get there at 10 past. Um, I don't really know how this is going to pan out because I haven't obviously asked for permission to film, but I'm going to try and document as much as I can. Um, excuse the rubbish face and the rubbish makeup. I'm actually really, really tired. It took a lot for me to get out of bed today because obviously what's going on with like the whole coronavirus or whatever. But I thought, let me just try my hardest. Um, so I'm here. Um, I'm going to walk you through it. If I don't get to film, I'm still going to try and like get a few bits in um, or describe my experience as a whole. And then I'll come back and tell you what happened. So yeah, right now it's literally standstill. Nothing's moving. So it's kind of annoying. I don't know what they're going to say about that in regards to being late. Obviously, I left my house on time, but these things happen but anywho let me um get there and let you know what happened so yeah so then it was time for me to go to the actual place i've never been here before by the way i've never seen it i've only seen it online so i found it the outside looked really nice i have to say the outside is very presentable very pretty the window is pink and it has like the little dollhouse um sign at the top i think it's really nice in my opinion so i walked in and i was greeted by um one of the stylists she was really nice she greeted me i said hi we both exchanged highs This is no shade, this is no, this is just my personal opinion. So when I came in, it was only one stylist and me. Obviously, being that the whole what's going on right now, I didn't expect there to be a lot of people. I think I was the only appointment, or maybe there was one other person before after me. So, the first thing I noticed, this is just my observation now, and she did tell me they were undergoing some um, renovations. They were under, undergoing renovations. But me, as a normal customer, Coming in, there was quite a lot of kerfuffle in the shop. There were a few boxes on the side, just stuff misplaced. And I feel like it could have been a little bit cleaner, but that's just me being honest. It could have been a little bit cleaner, but I understand obviously they're undergoing renovations. Um, so yeah, that's that. So I came in, my first impression was it's pretty for the most part, but you know, just a bit 
there's a few things a little bit misplaced or whatever so um i did ask her if i could film i asked for her permission um she said yes because obviously i didn't want to be just like whipping out the camera and just be like hey i just said hey i'm a youtuber i just want to film my experience she was like yeah that's fine which is kind of good because it kind of shows me that they're not really hiding anything so yeah that was really nice of her and we had a little nice convo, she was playing, you know, nice music, I gave her the wig, you know, she was plucking it, she was doing all the, you know, we're having a little chinwag. So she was very polite, very friendly, I didn't feel as though it was awkward or anything like that, she was really, really nice, so shout out to you girl, I don't know if you're going to be watching this, but yeah, shout out to you. Then I kind of explained to her that the, the wig is pretty much already done, all that needs to be done is just like a little bit of tweezing, a little bit of customization, just stick it down, I'm ready to go. Okay, cool. Just put it on my head and just glue it on. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's so everything is all done, like the hair is already like completely. Yeah. 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 It's kind of like taking me along with it. Do you want your hair tweezed? I said yes. Do you want got to be? Do you want glue? I said got to be, you know, the, the normal stuff. Do you want it more plucked or do you want um, like this? Whatever you feel is needs to be done. So my experience with the whole install Everything was fine. She did a good job. First, she you know put it on my hair to see how it fit. Then she gave it like gave it a little tweeze because she saw that the hairline was still a little bit full. She put it back on my head. Then the bag was a little bit tight. Then she loosened it. Then she put it back on my head. Basically, she was just like you know seeing what fits me, seeing what I'm comfortable with, and that was you know as a side it should do. The communication was great. I didn't feel as though she was being rude. I didn't feel uncomfortable. I didn't feel uncomfortable. I felt very comfortable with her. Uh, she used the got to be because I said I didn't want any glue because I'm just going to take it off anyway. She sprayed it and then kind of like touched it a little bit. I can't explain. I think you guys are going to see it. But she didn't like spray it on my head. She did it like a neater way. And I was like, oh, okay, this is some new skills I'm learning or whatever. So yeah, <laughs> I thought that was quite interesting. Then she put the band on. She styled it. And in my opinion, the wig looked presentable. It looked nice. She did a good job. So yeah that was that would i say that the install was great and this is not to be like i swear to god i'm not bashing this girl i absolutely love what she did but would i say it was great for what i paid for bear in mind the deposit was 40 pounds and the um balance was 80 pounds altogether how much is that 120 i think that's quite a lot of monies for a regular degla schmegler person okay and being that everything was already done i felt like for what she did, I don't, I didn't feel like it was worth 120 pounds, in my opinion. Did she do a bad job? No. Did she do a fantastic job? No. She did a good job. She did an okay job. But I feel like the whole point of going to a salon, the whole point of booking someone to literally do your hair or put the wig on your head, is for it to look 10 times better than you could have done it at home. Do I feel like I could have done what she did in the salon at home? Yes. Do I feel like I, sh I could have done what she did in the salon better? Yes. Not That's not to say I'm a fantastic hairstylist. I literally don't know probably hardly anything about hair. But I feel like it was okay. It wasn't great for what I paid for. So that's the only thing that I would say was a little bit meh. Nah. I'm going to show you like clips of the hair so you can see, you can form your own opinion whether or not you think it's great. Like I said, I don't think it's bad. Do I think it's great? No. So when she was done with my hair, I was pleased with it. Um, like I said, it wasn't fantastic, but it was good. I was pleased with it. Then she asked me to take some pictures and they have like a little back room. Um, it has like the, what do you call it? The shampoo place or whatever. So they have a little back room where it's like a picture thingy. <laughs> There's a wall to take pictures in. I'm going to show you the little clip. And we took a few pictures um, for her Instagram just to post, obviously. Then she packed my wig that I had on my head before I came in back in the bag, sealed it for me, and that was it. And she was just, you know, and it was her birthday the day after, so I was like, you know, have a good birthday and stuff like that. That was pretty much it, it was very quick. I think I got in there, my point was at one, I was done by two, like literally before two I was done. So very quick, very simple, very easy. Okay guys, so I've just left our house. This is what my hair is looking like in the daytime. I think it looks pretty decent, but I'm gonna do like a detailed sit down little chat with you to explain how everything went. Um, but so far, so good. Right, let me go into the positives and the negatives. Right, and I can understand where, where people are coming from with this whole, with their experiences, because I, like I said, I myself have had bad experiences with hairstylists. Obviously, it was a different situation with me because the salon wasn't full. I feel as though, one, they need to take into consideration, even though they're under, undergoing renovations, I do feel it's very important to have a clean um, working area, safe for customers to come in. So when I say safe, I mean like, the box is laying around, someone could trip over that and 
break their nose then you guys are in trouble just keep things to one side you know just have it looking prim and proper all the time it just it just creates kind of like a welcoming aura but another thing i didn't like was like i said mentioned earlier the fact that she asked me to come early um a little bit earlier to my appointment and as i said um these things happen you know hairstylists cancel or you know clients cancel and sometimes it may be better for the for the shop to run quicker if you reschedule other clients but i just feel like it just looks a little bit unprofessional in my opinion emails were quite friendly after i finished my hair actually i got another email asking uh, about my experience which was quite nice other than that i don't think i have anything else negative to say about dollhouse my personal experience was good it wasn't fantastic it wasn't great but it wasn't bad it was good that's pretty much it I don't know what else to say in this video. Obviously, you guys might have a different experience to me and it's just based on circumstance. I think we all have to understand that with reviews, a person is more likely to leave a bad review than they are to live, leave a good review. If I went to a place and I had a fantastic, out of the world, just great experience, would I leave a review? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe I would if it was so freaking great. I just couldn't believe how great the experience was. I will leave a review. If I had a terrible experience, girl, you know I'm on that Google. <laughs> so I can understand why people, you know, being that they may have had a bad experience, why they were so quick to leave a bad review because money is not easy to come by. And when you feel like you've wasted it, it's not a good feeling. It really isn't so i can completely understand as a normal human being why people will be frustrated with the brand if their experience was different to mine but as a whole i had a decent experience at dollhouse london but i would love to know you guys' experience it might be different to mine so leave your comment down below what you think of dollhouse what happened when you went there um, please try not to be nasty because this isn't supposed to be a video to tear any business down or to bring anyone down. Don't be nasty. Just leave an honest, simple, pim. Like, I had this pim. Don't go in on anyone or anything like that. Yeah, let's just try and be positive, especially with what's going on in the world right now. We don't need negatively, honey. We don't need it. Okay, keep it. But yeah, guys, that is pretty much it with this video. I know it was quite, it's quite a weird one. Please, I beg, guys, please. Back or me, please. Okay, just pin nicely inside the comments your opinion. Okay, hope that was interesting, that was insightful. Yeah, if you would like to book with Dollhouse, like I said, I had a good experience. I will leave their info down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in another video. Bye guys. Mwah.